I like to nipple ride my desk. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Podcast the Hero. This is an exciting week. Fritzy's tickling himself. <laughs> I am injured. It's been... <laughs> One week since you looked at me. Oh, God. Uh, it's been... So, <clears throat> this is... We're recording this on a Friday night. Mm-hmm. We typically record this on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, sometimes on a Thursday. Usually never as late as Friday. Yeah. It means right. that it, the content will be fresh as hell. It's we can talk fresh. about current events like, what the fuck are the, your hockey team doing? What the fuck are your hockey team doing? <laughs> yeah. What are what are your hockey team doing? Like a lot of the times when we talk about hockey, it's like, you got to like, remember like almost two weeks ago to yeah. know what the fuck we're talking what, about. What game were you talking about? Like we'll be watching the game. I'll be like, oh, Detroit scored. it would be like, wait, what, what when did they score? <laughs> it's like 2023 yeah <laughs> um so the reason we're doing this so late is because um on uh mon- very early monday morning uh i do you did you ever watch the movie um varsity yes. blues with dawson's creek yes of course and bubba right it's a great movie it's the best so you know, and uh, they, it was like, "Hey, you think about calling some dinosaurs?" And then she sprays on the she sprays on the bikini. No, <laughs> yes, Jesse well, Priestley or something like that. Yeah. Jamie Priestley. No, not her. Got it's a little treat for you, Dawson. It's Allie Larder. Is that who it is? Yeah, from Heroes. Oh, you know what? The they spoof it in one of those spoof movies, yes. and it's Jamie Priestley. I think in the it's not movie. another teen movie. Yeah, which is a fucking good movie. It's a really good movie. In in Germany, um, I think it was called teen sex movie. <laughs> that's actual. That's it's actual good. knowledge. That there I'm, is a movie that's teen sex movie. It's called Sex Drive. It's also a very good movie. Oh, there's like a middle aged sex movie called Short Bus. No, and all the sex is real. No. Yeah, that's called pornography. It's not, but it kind of is. Stars Sukyun Lee. Formerly of much music fame, which means almost nothing to you. Uh, but it, it begins <laughs> I know with, it means everything to our Canadian listeners, though. If I remember correctly, it begins with a man uh, ejaculating into his own face while singing the Star Spangled Banner. I'm not, okay, so I'm not making is, that up. It is pornography, then. I mean, that's the most American thing I've ever heard. Um. Uh, so True anyway, patriotism, early patriotism Monday. has been fucking spoiled in the Trump era. Oh God, that's what it yeah. used to mean before. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was before when patriotism was a good thing. Yeah. When you were doing something depraved, you said yeah. a star spangled banner just to say America, I love you too. And yeah. the taste of myself. <laughs> Sorry. That's crude. So I called a bunch of dinosaurs and by saying i called the dinosaurs uh it is a sound that comes out of my body that has since i was a small child when i vomit Mm. that is uh wakes the neighbors it shakes the house um my body every muscle in my body including every like blood vessel in my face everything just explodes forth and it comes out of me. You're a scream and, um, Yeah. I'm a scream too. Yeah. Um, normally, what ends up happening is I break all the blood vessels in my face and my eyes. I don't scream that hard. And uh, <laughs> so, like, I have, like, just blood eyes yep. and, like, lots of freckles, but they're not freckles, you know? Yeah. And um, sunspots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're... Yeah, it's just blood. Yeah, broken um, blood vessels in your face. And uh, this time it manifested in I lost my voice completely. Oh, well, uh, that so happens for, when you when you scream. Yeah, so for a few days <laughs> I couldn't talk. So we couldn't do this. Mm-hmm. I couldn't speak. And then when we were going to do this, uh, you have a malady. Yes. As well and in your irks me still area. Yeah, uh, also from screaming, not from scream yeah. yicking, but from just screaming. Uh, yeah. I was 
working on some new PTH stuff. And I finished a song that has been haunting me for a couple of weeks, which people will be glad to know. It's very heartfelt, very wonderful, very dramatic and all sorts of shit. But uh, I noticed at the very end of recording or writing the part that my throat was sore in an unusual way. And, uh, unusual way. <laughs> yeah. You know, like my throat is yeah, always a little always sore after little like sore. yelling. Um, and it has developed into a fucking canker sore on my uvula <laughs> which i showed fritzy before this happened don't don't show it i won't show it it's too gross and i there are two more canker sores in there i keep telling people they're cold sores yeah and then and then they say you have herpes yeah usually when i say that like people, people are like go, oh, you know cold sores are herpes they do they That's say that and i go says. oh no it's the other one and right. they go i don't know herpes complex <laughs> one one <laughs> it on your penis um but then my mother corrected me yesterday when i was telling her about it she was like it's not a fucking cold sore it's a canker sore i'm like oh they both start with c and canker sounds They're worse both to me. in my mouth yeah um i i was didn't tell you this before because i wanted to save it for this okay um, i have a tattoo of your face on my leg right yes and i have you um, <clears throat> The other day, this is yesterday morning, I woke up, this is before you told me. Did it have a canker sore on it? It had a, a big ingrown hair right on your mouth. You got like a friggin', uh, what do you call the, those dolls? You stick the pins in them? Yeah. You got that of me on your yeah, leg. So like my leg grew one, the uh, ingrew a hair and now you can't, you got a hurty throat. Yeah. So... Um, this episode is brought to you as always by Cornbot. Um, is Cornbot working um on replacing us as hosts of this podcast? We can only hope. That's true. Um, we're also brought to you by uh our Patreon mm -hmm. um subscribers, and I'm gonna name them. And if you would like to be named here, go to yeah. Patreon. Do you want me to say your name on the internet? Yeah. If you do, go to patreon.com slash podcast the hero and sign up. Yeah, I bet more people would sign up if you were reading their names. Send me the list. Because then they would be like, they could clip it and be like, he said my fucking name. So yeah. Cool. But then it also wouldn't make sense when it was like that name comes up that's like, Rody loves my balls right. or whatever it is. And then it'd be like, I'm just saying that about me. <laughs> Peggy Thrill, Green Street. Davey, oh, Peggy Thrill. P. Yeah. I know her. She's and very my nice. my actual mom signed up. Phi or Fee. Uh, A, E, Common, Thread, Evan, Gogol, Zane, Rody Loves My Dink. That's it. Robert, Fuck Shit, Eat Yourself. Love it. Uh, Spooky James, Deconomous, Matt P, Mushy, Zach, Kane, The First Dan. KH Pandas, Zach. Uh, oh, that's um, Corn Man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jeffrey, Way to Mason, TBJ, you, wait. Sorry, Anthony, I spoke. Yuri, I'm speaking over all of them. Nick, speaking over every Which one? Samurai, Ashwin, Ashwin. And Tops. Uh -huh. What? Nothing. What did you say? <laughs> I was just speaking over all the names so no one can hear them. <laughs> um, uh, I was. I had another thing I was going to share with you. Oh, guess what I got in the mail? Cookies. Oh, the Volition my... Ten Year Box Set. Isn't that something? Isn't that. I was. I was a little upset mm -hmm. that I didn't get number four. Why? Because well, it would have been cool to get like the fourth one. Because I figure the first three, like, probably are sitting in sheet happens forever. Mm. I don't I know that. Number 265. That's good for me that that many have sold. Yeah. There should, I'm sure. I don't even know. Are they still available? I have no idea. I assume yeah. so because they just promoted some of the t-shirts yesterday. So go to sheet uh, happens, publishing.com and pick yes. up your own copy. There's some cool stuff. There's a book in there that old Chody did. Yeah. There's a book. Should I show them? 
Sure. Should I show them how cool this is? I've never seen it. What? Shut yeah. up. I never got a copy. a copy. Not yet, no. I will get yeah. a copy, no doubt. So, uh, it came with a bunch of cool art, which I'm going to frame and hang. Ew. It came with this fucking cool metal. Oh. Fucking. Get out of the way. Of That's hard to the, see. Cause I'm wearing black, so it's <laughs> hard to see behind me, but like. That is cool. That's fucking cool. I can't wait to hang that up on the wall behind me. Um, a bunch of art. It came with the vinyl. And it came with this book. And I opened up the book. And I just opened up to a random page. And what did I see? A little picture of cheese. Drunk oh, yeah. in an airport. He looks great. And it's got like uh, song notes and lyric, all the lyrics and notes and... I somehow that knew stuff. that I was going to see the word shred diarrhea, which is the, that was the uh, working name for drumhead trial, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shred diarrhea. Which is kind of what that song is. It's a better description of what the song is than <laughs> drumhead trial. <laughs> I don't know. This says farts only. That's true. There was a microphone set up in the studio for farts only. And that is a picture of it. The, I like this little photo bomb of you. Photo bombing Tim. Ah uh, yes. Like, uh, he's Tim lo- looks he looks like he's working picture. so hard, and you're like, I'm not doing anything. Look at my hat. That is true. What's happening? So very cool. Uh, very excited to have this. Pick up your own copy. Sheet happens. Just Google it. And, and sheet happens uh, publishing dot com. Yeah, there you go. Um, this week, uh, for this episode, um, oh, and it, it did come with picks. Sorry. Nah, all sheet happen stuff does. I love it. I love them. That's all I play is sheet happen picks. Well, when you got as many as you do. Yeah, I got, yeah, you gotta like, I just get. They're weird little jazz three kind of things. These are the new ones, the new shape. Oh. It's like the Jazz 3 variant that's a little fatter around the edges mm. than a Jazz 3. I kind of like it. I can't I forget what they're called. Like Maybe Jazz 4? No. Jazz 5? It's it's like, they were like the new thing a decade ago. Oh, she happens. You know, they're like Germany, so behind the times. I mean, you know, how Germany much just got Marilyn Manson, pick? and they really like him. Uh, they haven't learned anything about him being right. a bad guy yet they're still <laughs> just they're just learning about the rumors of him taking his ribs out to suck his own dick but don't worry another 20 years from now germany's gonna know all about the misdeeds of marilyn manson is he and they'll um, stop listening is he is he the kid from the wonder years that's right paul paul yeah Speaking of, like, uh, this, nostalgic fucking TV shows. Right. <laughs> oh, look at that. What are we here to do so today, Fritzum? We're talking about the, the 19, early 90s sitcom, mm-hmm. uh, Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. Paul Dano? Paul, oh, I wish. So this was um, the brainchild of Jim Henson. Mm-hmm. It is a puppet based program yeah um, sort of yeah it's um it's like they take three people to work each person so there's a person in a suit and then there's is that true? A, a puppeteer that works the head and then there's a voice actor that does the voice and they do all this stuff and it's all based on uh you of you're a big ninja turtles guy Look at your shirt. The first Ninja Turtles movie, mm-hmm. right? All the Ninja Turtles, right? The the animatronic puppet Ninja Turtles in that movie were created by Jim Henson's company. And they did the best job. Right. It was amazing. And so he saw that and went, I have an idea to use that technology for a TV show. He died before yeah. it came out, but it was his brainchild and then... Um, his son his took son. it over, yeah. um, and, uh, and created the, uh, uh, like 
a legit television sitcom. It was part of TGIF, if you're too young to know what TGIF was, on uh, television. Uh, was it ABC? Um, Possibly. In the States. Uh, every Friday night, they had like a block of sitcoms, and it was like Urkel, right? Family, Family Matters. Matters, and uh, Dinosaurs, and uh, I don't know. Sabrina uh, the Teenage Witch. Some, yeah, something like that probably, right? So, like, Dude, I stayed the, in Friday nights in like yeah. the early Everybody 90s stayed in to watch and TGIF. watched TGIF, like truly. The best. And like our whole family getting around the TV and be like, oh, we can't miss Sabrina this week. That Salem's a sassy little kitty. <laughs> <laughs> um i wish i was joking and you and you were like uh uh melissa joan hart uh she she grew up from the clarissa explains it yeah. all years to being kind of a, a little heartthrob mm-hmm. for the young adolescent boys you know what? Like, there's probably almost 10 years between when this was on TGIF and when Sabrina the Teenage Witch was on TGIF. Really? Probably. Mm. I, I don't, wanna say I don't that remember. You don't remember Sabrina? I mean, I do, but, like, I'm so much older than you that by the time, right, like, Sabrina, I knew it was on, but I was, like, 38 and wasn't You were already TGIF forgetting things in your old age. Yeah. You'd already been stricken with dementia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you couldn't form new memories. Every time it came on, I was like, witchcraft. Um, <laughs> it's from and, the uh, old world. So anyway, so dinosaurs, right? It's um, uh, it's loosely sort of uh, honeymooners um, uh, and all in the family-esque yeah. Right. Those those sort of classic '70s sitcom tropes brought into the '90s, um, and uh, it's great. Yeah, it's so strange. It is really <laughs> freaking weird. And when we decided we were going to do this, and this was thanks to a suggestion on Patreon, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, the I went in to look at the episodes, and I was like, okay, we're going to watch the first one and the last one, and uh, I was like, okay, so season one, episode one, and season one, episode 13, right, is what I was thinking, like my oh, memory Oh, you thought it only then, ran a I season. Was like, this show uh, clearly did not last long, right? This yeah. is going to be one of those shows like the Cavemen show where it lasted, you know, half of a season and yeah. nobody got it and it like went away. Or like and that then I was show like, Pro Stars with Wayne Gretzky, Bo Jackson, and Michael Jordan right. that ran for like 13 episodes. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Uh, And then I saw season four, and I went, are you fucking shitting me? Yeah. This show was on for four years. Yeah. And it deserved to be so. Yeah, it really did. It was fucking bizarre. Yeah. The very first episode opens with um, like a sort of memorandum for, is that how you say it? A memorandum? A they're eulogizing uh, Jim Henson himself because right. unfortunately he never got to yep. see this fucking strange show come to fruition. Yeah. And, um, and so cast, right. The cast of this show is, uh, there's a, the dad dinosaur Earl Earl. Right. And he's uh, played by Stuart Pankin. And if you don't know who he is, look him up. He's done voices for a ton of stuff. I have no idea who he is. Um, his wife, Fran, is played by Jessica Walters, the amazing, great Jessica Walters. Yeah, that um, was wild. The realization right? that that was her. Yeah. Because, you know, I know her from Arrested Development. Right. You know, and it's just like, obviously she was much younger. Yeah. She doesn't sound like the person that I know. Yeah. Uh, just fucking flabbergasted. Yeah. And Archer's mom, right? Yep. On Archer. So her uh, voice art. should be very recognizable. Yes. Yep. In that you know not, her from another animated thing, but she doesn't sound like that. Yeah. Because, yeah, much younger. Mm-hmm. Um, Robbie Sinclair is the teenage son. Um, he is played by Jason Willinger, who uh, a quick IMDb search showed that this was basically the only thing that he really did. Um, yeah, which is strange because he yep. was great. Uh Teen daughter Charlene, 
she's the younger of the two siblings, uh, is Sally Struthers. Really? Yeah. Let me you Googleize Sally Struthers. Because... Sally Struthers. Um, and then uh, there's a... Oh, a... my word. Are you kidding me? No, I'm dead serious, dude. <laughs> Sally Struthers. The that baby... Sally Struthers could never be a teen. <laughs> right. A teen. She just no, looks she's like been, she's always been that way. Uh, an adult for... The baby child. is probably the most interesting part. I'm sorry to have cut you off. No, the baby is Kevin Clash. A.K.A.? Elmo. Yeah. Is the voice of Elmo. And that is like, you know what? Like, I never put those two things together as a kid. Right. No, me either. But turning it on and watching it right it's away, just voice. going like, holy fuck, that's Elmo. Right. It's the exact same voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, his best, uh, Earl's best friend is uh, Roy, mm -hmm. who's played by uh, Sam McMurray, who is a character actor. Um, you would know him when you saw his face and a lot of stuff. He's been on like one episode of every TV show, that kind of guy. Um, and uh, he is, I think, most famous for playing the <laughs> playing um, the original or the coach in the original TV adaptation of A League of Their Own. So oh. like the Tom Hanks role. Wow. In like the old like 90s or early 2000s. Uh, TV adaptation of A League of Their Own. There's That's a new a tough gig. There's a new A League of Their Own uh, drama series that's you know new, but this is the old one yeah. where it was just like let's take the movie and make it a TV show. They've been trying um, to make this a TV show forever, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and then um, Earl's boss, mm. uh, who is Mr. Richfield, yeah, uh, is played by uh, Sherman Hemsley, which everybody knows from the Jeffersons and All in the Family. And um, both both of those shows, right? This show takes many of its cues and tropes and yeah. and all of the things from those shows. So it's it's kind of neat that Sherman Hemsley is. Yeah, everybody um, who is a dinosaur themselves knows yep. them from those fucking archaic old <laughs> shows. Right. Yeah. I never heard of that man before in my life. I'm 24. <laughs> <laughs> so, episode one. Ooh. Right, we're uh, introduced to the first thing we see is a TV newscast with a, a a meteor three times the size of Earth is headed for our planet, yeah, and will destroy all life on Earth. And then he goes, "This just in, it missed." Yeah. Um, the newsman. His name is Howard Hand Up Me. Yeah, yeah. That's a crude joke. Yes, but it's amazing, yeah. right? Just a great way to start. Um, also, a meteor that's three times the size of Earth, that's not a meteor. No, that's, that's another- That's a rogue planet. Yeah. <laughs> right? And once you get to five times the size of Earth, we're now getting into like gas planet giants. territory. Gas giants? Yeah. Like, gas giants start to form at five to ten times the mass of Earth. I thought I was in a gas giant uh, just before this episode started. Uh-oh. Stunk in here. You got the toots? Not me, no. Someone in the room. <laughs> in the empty room that you're in all by yourself all the time? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, the next joke, the next big joke is Earl sitting on his couch, right, who's seeing this newscast, changes the channel, and it's a black and white video of two, like, stop motion, the way they used to make, like, dinosaur movies in the 20s and 30s, yeah, right, of two dinosaurs fighting, and he goes, ooh, wrestling, and he sits back <laughs> to watch it. I don't remember that a, joke, but I like it. It's a really good joke. Um, um, the... Uh, the rumor around Earl is that he's based on Ernest Borgnine. Yes. Who I Nobody am familiar nobody with. Nobody younger than me probably knows who Ernest Borgnine is. But if you look up Ernest Borgnine, watch any movie that he's been in, and then watch 
this, you go, oh, yeah, of course, he's Ernest Borgnine. Um, he, he talks about um, the golden age of dinosaurs, Earl mm-hmm. does, which was the time when dinosaurs lived in the woods. Yeah. And they ate didn't have families and they just ate each other to survive. Yeah. 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 Uh, and now they have, in this world, they have evolved to have like marriages and live in houses and um, uh, uh, sort of the modern conveniences of life. Um, and he yearns for the, the golden age when you just lived in the woods and ate your kids. Yeah. And, everything it, and cool. it does seem to be like a relatively recent development that right. dinosaurs have families and shit like that because later on he's talking to someone at work and they're like wow that's what you that's what you get when you fucking make this horrible decision to yeah. domesticate yourself yeah um uh then we get him coming home from work the next day or whatever it doesn't really i mean it just sort of kind of jumps to yeah He's coming home from work, um, and we get a very uh, outmoded, very honeymooners all in the family moment where he walks in the door and says, like, I don't smell dinner. Why isn't dinner on the table? Where's my dinner? Right. And uh, Fran, his wife, is chasing his dinner around the house. Yeah. It's a weird little, like. Monkey thing yeah. that's escaped the pot somehow. Guy and he and he runs out the door. Mm-hmm. And Earl goes, "Was that my dinner running out the door?" <laughs> and, uh, and so, like, uh, and and on the television while this is happening is a commercial, yeah. like an infomercial for these new pots and pans that have cages on top. Like, yeah, they're covers. grated. They're grates. Yeah. To keep your dinner from getting out and running away. <laughs> and she says to him, which is also a horribly outdated and terrible thing to, to do to a spouse, which is, if you loved me, you would buy me these. Yeah. And I went, wow, that is a brutal marriage dynamic right there. Yeah. I feel they like- They seem to love each other very much, but that is a brutal <laughs> dynamic. I feel like they're like- <sighs> wild sexism that it's steeped in was outdated at the time yeah. and like that kind of was the joke that this right. was like you know Flintstones or fucking Archie Bunker or you know like that kind of bullshit where it's like the man is the hunter the yeah. woman is the gatherer and the joke they're in is that they're fucking dinosaurs yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's great I mean it's it's a good joke mm-hmm um, she also mentions to him, uh, he talks about, yeah, he's the, the king of the dinosaurs. And mm-hmm. she says, no, my my high school ex-boyfriend, the T-Rex, he yeah. was the king of the dinosaurs. Because he's a megalos- megalodon? Yeah, megalosaur, megalosaurus. Megalosaurus or something like that. Something. He's not a T-Rex, but right. Robbie is. Right. And I want to talk about that. Why are they different dinosaurs? Well, I mean, clearly she banged Roy. Yeah. Like, but Robbie's like, not his kid. And the fucking daughter, like, what is she? She's like a myosaur. <laughs> I like, like that you know what all the dinosaurs I are. I don't. I don't. You do. But you she has like a do. very like specific crest on her head yeah. that is very kind of like Lisa Simpson, if you will. Yep. Um, But she's not the same kind of dinosaur as either of them. <laughs> it's great like what it, do they ever explain that like no that's kind of the problem with the way we did this we watched the first episode and the last episode <laughs> we have no so context like, of what happened there's so much that must have gone on yeah <laughs> very um, strange i like that uh she says, well, you could have a frozen dinner. And she goes to the ice box. It gets out a frozen dinner. And it's just one of those, like, lemury monkey guys just yeah. frozen in a block of ice. <laughs> like, with its arms and stuff hanging out. Yeah. It's very funny. Um, The other really, uh, I felt like, smart joke was uh, Robbie asked, why are the dates counting backwards? Mm-hmm. Right, because it's B 
B.C. Yes. Right. Before Christ. That's yeah. what B.C. stands for, right? N- n- well. Before it, the I think Christ it's era. what it used to, but now B.C. is before common era. I know, yeah. Common. Common Christian. Rapper. It's... No, oh, it was before Common bef- came around? Before Common came out with his first for, record. Yeah. Everything um, sort of starts there. <laughs> did you ever, did you figure out what, what, what Earl's job was? Yeah, he pushes trees over. <laughs> <laughs> like you see, he's working at like a construction site. Yeah. Right? And it's like, uh, we're clearing this land for uh, tract homes and there's like a construction site foreman's trailer mm-hmm. and- and like, so, okay, he works in construction, but like his job is literally just pushing trees over. Yeah. It's so, great. Because they've recently domesticated themselves. They need to put up a bunch of homes, so they need to like clear cut the forest. Right? <laughs> <He> just, just... <laughs> I think it's like super interesting that um, like the, the whole premise of the show, like they mm-hmm. mention it a fuck ton of times that they're an advanced society Mm -hmm. and it's like as society advances uh society also declines right you know what i mean like that's the whole kind of like thesis of it like yeah it's silly it's stupid it's fucking whatever but like is really quite poignant i thought in several aspects yeah and and it's at this point that roy convinces Earl to ask Mr. Richfield for a raise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Earl at first doesn't want to, and then is easily convinced yeah. by Roy. Cause like there's something else that happens. I can't quite remember what it is. He wants something. He wants to spend he wants money. a 90 inch television. He wants a 90 inch television, but Fran wants the pots Yep. and Robbie comes in and he's like, Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm flunking math. Yeah. And they're like, well, he needs a tutor. So he's yeah. like, fuck, I'm never going to get my TV. <laughs> yeah, that's it. that's exactly it. How this is, how much is a 90-inch television? He's like, ex, ex, it, or how much, is, uh, how much is a tutor? Well, it's exactly as much as a 90-inch television. Yeah, which is preposterous now. Yes. Uh, and the fact that 90-inch television, like a 90-inch television in 1991 when this came out it's the biggest tv that exists yeah it was yeah like yeah. like inside basketball arenas they didn't have 90 inch screens people still don't have a 90 inch tv I, I don't yeah i don't either some people do i feel like i, I knew them. a guy that had a 90 inch tv and i was like that's the biggest fucking tv i've ever seen what's the point of this yeah you can't even look at it like you have to turn your head but here's the other thing they're fucking dinosaurs, <laughs> right? Like, I'm pretty sure Fran's a T-Rex. So, you got to take into consideration how big a T-Rex is. What is a 90-inch TV to a yeah. T-Rex? It's nothing. Probably not. Probably not and much. their vision's based on fucking, uh, their visual acuity is based on movement. So, they never saw the best, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> this is Jurassic Park. Uh, but, yeah. So... Um, so Earl walks in to talk to Mr. Richfield at this point. Mr. Richfield is a T, uh, is a triceratops. Is isn't he? he? Mm, he's got more horns. Like he's certainly ceratopsian. But Are I there think other ter- ceratops? Oh my word. Besides yes. high tops? Well, yes. <laughs> But uh, no, there's like the fucking Cosmoceratops or something like that. Like there's a bunch of them that have fucking like tons of different horns. And like, I'm sure they fucking actually defined what he was. Hmm. I don't know exactly, but I don't think he, he, I don't think he's actually a Triceratops. Okay. Well, he's a Ceratopsian regardless. Okay. Thank you. Um, And he's sitting behind a desk and Earl comes in to make his case for why, um, he should get a raise and Mm -hmm. in some weird twist of circular logic and and uh uh i don't even know how to explain it but basically mr richfield talks earl into quitting yeah 
That and, was strange. And, and they then never... acts very sad to see him go. Yeah. Right. And like, even when that scene ends, I was kind of sitting there going like, did he fire him? Right. Like, did he quit? Or is like, it, are they kind of cool? <laughs> like, I'm uncertain. Right. Earl certainly believes that he's no longer working there. Yeah. Right. So now, not only does he not have a job, no income. No, no. Definitely not TV. getting that 90 inch TV. Robbie still needs a tutor. Fran still needs the pot and pans set. And he is feeling like uh, a total this, failure. This is, yeah, this is a fail on his part. Due to toxic dinosaur masculinity. Yep. And he, um, he ends up uh, out in the woods. Mm-hmm. Well, um, he's decided to leave his family at that yeah. point. Yeah. He goes home. He tells Fran about it. They have a big fucking blowout. Yeah. And where he says a lot of shitty things. Yes. And then he's like, fuck it. I'm going back to the old ways, baby. Yep. He goes out in the woods. Yeah. And he spends 30 seconds in the woods mm -hmm. and goes, this is for the fucking birds. Yeah. It's pretty cold. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm hungry. Yeah. And, uh, and then Fran comes and gets him. Well... He has a little word with someone, doesn't he? Well, true. True. Yeah. There's this a, a very nice scene um, with his dinner. Yeah. He runs into his former dinner. And um, the uh, he talks about how like he and a lot of the people that he knows, their homes have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. All this stuff because somebody keeps knocking over knocking all, down the trees. all the trees. Yeah, and um, and and he ends up basically trying to do like a a suicide by dinosaur. Yeah, he's going he's just, just eat like, me, dude. Just eat me, dude. My, my family's, family's gone. Dead. My... Without my family, yeah. Nothing. What's the point? Yeah, just eat me. Yeah, and Earl goes, I'm a, I'm a dinosaur. I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna eat you. I don't care. Yeah, and he gets, and he just can't do it. No, and he lets the guy go, and uh, and he's um, he's realizing that family is maybe the purpose yeah. of life. Yeah, I the think key to happiness. But also, just before this happens, right when he's having the whole big blowout with Fran, mm -hmm. right is when we first find out. Oh yeah. That Fran has, has laid an, an egg. egg. Did you say has pooped an egg? Mm hmm Okay. That's what they do, right? Dinosaurs poop eggs out of their cloacas. That's right. I mean, and probably. They were fucking kind of birds. Yeah. Um, it's funny that we've been talking about this the whole time, but we haven't discussed like how the episode is framed because it sort of starts like a clip show almost. Yeah. You know, like the whole fucking premise of that episode is he is with the baby and he's telling the baby yes. the story of how he, the baby became, came into existence yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's and, like really fucking structured like a clip show but right, just for like the brand new flashback. clips yeah <laughs> right yeah and um and there's a there's a really great line where fran's asking him you know to ask me how my day was and he's like fran uh, to, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I could care less how your day was. Nothing yeah. that you can say is going to have any impact on the rest of my life. And she takes a step aside and there's this egg. Yeah. And, and his he, response is that bummed. better be breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the part where he was like, maybe it's empty. Yeah. Maybe it's just one of those bad eggs, and he's like, hold it up to the light, and they hold it up to the light, and you can see the silhouette of the it fucking puppet waving, and it's like very clearly just sat behind the egg. <laughs> but it waves. Yeah. It's so perfect that it's just yeah. like holding up to see if there's anything in there, and it's just like hanging out, and it goes, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the baby. Um. Uh, he also called Robbie a dud. He said we had, we had two. Oh, he two says we had before, three duds and she's like, something. we had one dud and Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
Uh, also, I feel like Earl is way older than me. Yeah, but at that time, like He's, the cast of Cheers, like some yeah. of them were in their 20s. Yeah. You know, like I think fucking Frasier was only like 32. Yeah. People just looked older then. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, dinosaurs, definitely. Yeah. Because like Earl is 43. Oh, he is? At this point, yeah. And wow. he's younger than I am, and I feel like he's way older than me. Oh, yeah, well. It's, I'm just childish. Um, a hard job like tree pushing will fucking put some years on you, pal. <laughs> and then we have we have a little moment where the it's back to, like, now, and, mm-hmm. and uh, Earl is with the baby, and he's talking to the baby, and the baby just says, out of nowhere, for no reason whatsoever, I'm going to bite you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then I it bites like, him. I was like, the baby's just a cat. Yeah. Right? This is the thing a cat does. You're, like, hanging out, having a nice moment, and the cat just goes, I'm going to bite you now. Arrgh. Like, that's what the, <laughs> the baby. The other thing, um, that the other question that this brought up for me with the whole, like, uh, eating your babies and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. When your son was born, did you ever at one point go, God, I wish I could have just ate him? No, but I think that often now. <laughs> like you wish you would have? I wish I could. He'd be meatier now. Oh. No, but we ate the placenta. Did you? No. I don't know. That's I don't for know yucky, yucky hippies. People do weird things. People eat the placenta. I know. It's real weird. Yeah, and it's like, you know what? A lot of people think that a placenta is uh, just like a bunch of like fluid that no. comes out, like yucky, yucky fluid. It's not. It's like a big fucking alien sack. Yeah. 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 I mean, Don't I, eat ate my, it. I ate my goddaughter's uh, umbilical cord like pasta, but that's normal. That's that is a, normal. a normal thing everyone does. Everyone does um, and it's, you know, you don't eat your own kids, just your God children. <laughs> That's how you've put God in you. Yeah. Through umbilical cords. Yep. It's delicious. It's not, delicious, delicious God. I got to think that umbilical cords are mostly full of poo. You think? We're getting a little off track here, but like, <laughs> it's the mother's digested food that goes down to the baby. Like, I guess it is somewhat nutrient rich, but like, so it's not quite poo, but it's not quite not poo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you understand? I me? don't. I don't want to know any of the stuff that goes on inside placentas women. and umbilical cords. <laughs> don't want to know anything that goes on inside women. Uh, no, I. I. That's fine. I know like all the things that are going on inside my wife. Like it's mostly all like gurgling, and oh. bubbling. And you assume um, most of the things that go on yeah, inside. I do. I. Friggin' mansplainer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Look, I took a middle school health class. I know everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. In public school. My sexual sexual health teacher was like a fucking billion-year-old man with eyebrows that looked like caterpillars. Mm-hmm. You could also see him down at the local fucking, like, at the region with a sign that was like anti-abortion on the weekends. Oh. So you got like a, a nice... Helping of abstinence only. No, he taught the curriculum, but he didn't believe it. <laughs> That's really funny. He's an asshole. Um, so anyway, so Fran comes and saves him from the woods. With her mastodon cakes. Yep. Which if, you, if you're a history buff, not, not, the same, not the same time period. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, it's, that's a very, it's a very um, uh, F- Fred Flintstone, right? Yeah. Mastodon cakes is a very Flintstones kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I like that she puts them like on a tray, but it's like a big stone block with a rope, and yeah. it's like pulling it, and he's like, "I gotta get. Huh? Why are they getting away from like <laughs> classic gag, right?" Um, and then. His dinner saves the day. Mm-hmm. He uh, goes into work to beg for his job back. Yep. 
And it turns out that his dinner, his name's Arthur. Mm -hmm. And Arthur's now like the new assistant at work. And yeah. puts in a real good word for him. And gets him gets rehired with a what are the, what do they refer to his raise as? It's like a negligible <laughs> negligible raise. amount. Yeah, like uh, it's something. It's not that. It's something that's just like <sighs> I can't. I can't remember the term they use. It's really funny, but it's yeah. like something. And then he to the comes and shows like off his unnoticeable. New yeah, with his unnoticeable amount raise. Um, inconsequential. Inconsequential, I think, is the term. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and his raise? Inconsequential, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoa. You okay there? Just about spilled a fuck ton of ju wa juice all is over myself. Juice? I was going to say juice. It's water. It's juice. It's I earth wish it juice. Was, I wish it was juice. Um, uh, so he comes home. He's feeling good. Uh, then the baby is born. Yeah, nobody feels good then. Right? And it is the most uh, TGIF thing that has happened the entire episode. Mm -hmm. Right? Where the baby is born, the baby just, imagine Elmo's voice, uh, just spewing like a line of catchphrases <laughs> to see which one's going to land. Yeah. And they're like, we're going to, we'll give them all up front. And then whichever one lands the best with the focus groups on the meter, that's the one we're going to stick with going forward. And they found one. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then, um, you know, because you can't have a 90s sitcom without like your comic Can relief. I do that? Right. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. You need it. You need it. You had to have it. Uh, and then he, uh, looks out the window at cavemen inventing the wheel. <laughs> Only to... Turn it into a hula hoop. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also, how episode one ends. It should also be noted that um, that timeline is wrong as well. Dinosaurs and like, I don't know, Australopithecus. Yeah. Right? The fucking Neanderthals. Yeah. And they didn't exist at the same time. No. <laughs> I'm not sure that the dinosaurs that existed like those dinosaurs would have existed with any land mammals yeah i'm not super clear on it i know like even the dinosaurs themselves there's like as much time between yeah. the fucking t-rex and the stegosaurus as there is between them and the us. fucking them and us yeah, yeah. so it's like who cares? At some point, you're like, we're doing a fucking dinosaur show. We're yeah. going to have cavemen. We're going to have fucking the whole thing. Woolly mammoths and saber-toothed yeah. tigers. and Just going to lump all those fucking eras in together. Yeah. Who cares? Yep. It's a fucking show. <laughs> it's a hit. So that's, that's episode one. That's how we meet the family. We meet yeah. all the dinosaurs. Um, uh, and then we it. watched... The second episode. The last episode. The last episode. Yeah, we didn't watch the second episode. No, it's the second episode we're going to talk about. Nah. The last Can episode. Can I just say, until the moment you mentioned how they were puppeteered, yeah. I assumed, as a child and as a grown man watching this show, that each fucking dinosaur was puppeted by one person. Um, oh, sorry. Just got a text message about a very special engagement. Oh. Of some family members. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, <laughs> That's how you got the news. I got a text message. It, well, it's very important. Yeah, no one's going to fucking call me. I'm the brother-in-law. <laughs> I, I, and I get it. It's fine. Even if they did call me, I'd be like... Pfft. Why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? Text me. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Is your wedding going to be an open bar? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I care very deeply. But um, I was under the impression. Yeah. Until you said yeah. how they were puppeteered, that there was just 
one person in each suit, the mouths <laughs> matched up with their mouths, Mm-mm. and they were also speaking. Nope. <laughs> It seems foolish now. Yeah. Retrospectively. I just was convinced by the magic of the show. There's a that's great. Then they then Jim Henson pulled it off. Yeah. Right. Despite the fact that their mouths seldom match up to right. their voices. And uh I read a um Book. Uh, like one of the trivia things on IMDb. I read all the trivia things on you IMDb. You did? Yes, of course. So so the fact that uh, Earl oh, Earl often sighs when he enters a room, when he's mm-hmm. walking across a room, he sighs a lot on the show. I didn't see that. Uh, and the reason for that is the actor inside the suit, the only place that he can see out is through Earl's mouth. And so as he's trying to walk across a space, <sighs> he sighs so that he can open... Th- open the mouth so the actor can see where he's going as he's traversing the set. That's funny. Yeah. Um, because the other, at least in the episodes we watched, the other uh, characters don't do a ton of walking around. No. Right? But Earl definitely has his coming home from work, walking into the house moment. Mm-hmm. Um, his chair? Yeah. Yeah. Did you read the trivia about his chair? But there's, there's it's just nothing. two arms. Yep, no seat, no nothing. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. So I was read about. I read about the trivia as well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I was skimming it because I missed some of it. <laughs> and there was a couple things that stood out to me. Okay. One because like, as watch watching it as a kid and watching it now, I was like, holy fuck! Like this is kind of The Simpsons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. And the Simpsons actually apparently were a little pissed about it and have like a reference in one of their episodes to kind of, like, I don't remember what it is, so I can't really speak to it, but it's kind of like being like, they're fucking ripping us off. Yeah. And it isn't, as it turns out, as like they're fucking early drafts from like before the Simpsons aired. So yeah, it's just... uh, Maybe the idea of like a family sitcom done a little differently is not that original of a thought. Right. And that that specific family dynamic is like someone just wrote, hey, it's an all American fucking atomic family. Yeah. Is that what you call it? An atomic family? Yeah. A and nuclear the dad family. works and he's disgruntled. Is it, it's nuclear? Yeah. Or nuclear. Nuclear. Uh, but yeah, like, so the nuclear family is not mm-hmm. like. Yeah that crazy of an idea like with a stay-at-home mother housewife Mm -hmm. and two children boy and a girl and a dad who works too hard overeats and is somewhat disgruntled yeah Uh, yes like i said it's been happening since the honeymooners and you know that's uh Mm -hmm. but so i saw some other stuff before we talk about the final episode i watched a handful of other episodes okay. specifically because of in the trivia i fucking saw there was a thing that was like when it went into syndication and disney bought it or whatever the fuck happened mm-hmm. disney uh re-aired all the episodes with the exception of a handful mm. and the very first one that i saw was called what sexual harris meant and i was like why didn't they air that episode and I looked on fucking Disney Plus and I was like, oh, it's there. So I watched it and it was fucking great. <laughs> it was bizarre, but it was great. And I still like, I'm not super sure why Disney didn't air it. Um, well, you know what? Maybe it's the Disney Channel and it is like, sure. it's a little risque, I suppose. Uh, but my main thought is uh, Americans are it. afraid of sex. Uh, not as much as. As much as I think uh, America hates women. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we hate, <laughs> we hate women. So Fran's like best friend, her husband left or something like that, and she needs a job. And she's like, oh, maybe a role can get you a job knocking down trees. And she's a fucking a patasaurus. You only see her head and neck. It comes in through the right. window and she talks. But you get the idea that she's very attractive. Like, 
it's difficult to be attracted to her as a human being because <laughs> right. it's like whatever. But they make it fairly apparent that she is an attractive dinosaur. So he goes down to work and he talks about getting her hired. The boss is like, a woman, are you insane? And then she puts her head through the door and like the boss gets like tongue tied. It's like, holy fuck. This is the <laughs> sexiest dinosaur I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> so whatever. He hires her. Because uh, she's really good at knocking down trees. Yeah. She knocks down like three or four trees with just one fell swoop. Um, but so she has to go report to uh, the foreman. His name is Al Harris. And he's voiced by Jason Alexander, a.k.a. George, George Costanza. Costanza. And when we meet him, he's talking to a bunch of stuff, a bunch of buddies, a bunch of people that work for him. Mm-hmm. And he's being crude as fuck <laughs> like he's saying all this like <laughs> crude stuff about women and um so she shows up and he's like instantly being a fucking dick to her um and it's like says a bunch of stuff implies a bunch of weird stuff like weird stuff that is just like fuck and he, also before that he proclaims himself like he's telling all this these sexual fucking innuendos, innuendos. Mm-hmm. And uh, he proclaims, he goes, that's why they call me Sexual Harris, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> I um, really wanted to know who yeah. Sexual Harris was. <laughs> he, Yeah, he's an actual character in the show, sexual and he's George Costanza. Um, but anyways, he ends up asking her on a date in this real weird way, and he's like, she's obviously like, fuck no. And he's like, cool, you're fired. Oh. Um, so, one thing <laughs> one thing goes to another and she takes the company to court. But, like, the judges are, like, one of them is the boss. Like, the <laughs> triceratops kind yeah. of guy. And the other are just, like, these weird guys. And they keep, like, one guy keeps interrupting and being like, so when were you going to tell us that you were a prostitute before this? And she's like, I was never a prostitute. And he's like, you heard me say prostitute? Okay, now strike it. And he keeps like saying all this like weird shit. And there was a scene in it where one of the characters who only shows up once, it's fucking weird, man. He shows up and he's on this committee that's like overseeing the trial. Right. And... Like, all his strings are moving. Like, all his strings are in the scene. And, like, I couldn't tell whether they were like, is this a real dinosaur? Or is this supposed to be a puppet that's just, like, saying something weird? Like, it's obviously, like, an editing mistake. But right. it's fucking bizarre. Anyway, trial goes on. They're obviously not being fair to her. And then sexual Harris takes the stage. And they're like, like, so did you say all this filthy stuff to her? And he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I did. They're like, did you fire her because she wouldn't go on a date with you? And he was like, yes, I did. (laughs) And then they kind of sit back and they're like, uh, okay. Well, you see, uh, this is not right. (laughs) However. Oh, no. When he says it like a joke. Oh, no. It's pretty funny. So... We file, we find in his fucking favor, and they find in his favor, and then all of the men, including Earl, sing a weird little song about how being a man is awesome, <laughs> and ladies, ladies suck, and then it goes back to this scene where they're in the kitchen, uh, the Apatosaurus' head is through the window, and she's like, you know, like, this sucks, whatever. And the young daughter comes in and she's like, you know what? You've inspired me today. I'm going to do better in the future and we're going to press for equality. And then it goes to Fran and she's like, we're an advanced society. Uh, We've got a long way to go, but surely it won't take that long until we're equals. And then she kind of like looks at the camera, breaks the fourth wall and it's like, (laughs) and the episode is over. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it was a That's good episode great. with like a hard point yeah of being like hey guess what this was 65 million years ago yeah <laughs> that's fucking amazing uh the final episode which is 
Um, I think it aired was episode seven of season four, and then it went into syndication. And, and they had extra episodes. They had extra episodes that didn't air before the finale. But this is the actual finale episode. But it um, wouldn't make sense to air them afterwards. No, it did not. <laughs> no. Did not uh, fit the continuity. So we're, we're started again with Howard Hand Up Me. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and he's announcing that the Bunch Beetles are coming. Mm-hmm. And it's the annual migration of the Bunch Beetles. The Bunch Beetles... Uh, swarm in and they eat all the cider poppies and they yeah. come every year and, and they it's make an important a thing beautiful show in the sky the swarm of the bunch beetles and it's like fourth of july right it's the fireworks it's whatever it's uh it's a big celebration it's an annual event that everybody you know um uh is is excited for and we cut from there to Earl and his family, and they're outside, and Earl's working on the grill, and you know it's going to be a, like a picnic day kind of a celebration thing when the bunch beetles come. And we also learn that it's like an important e- ecological yes. event because it fucking eats back the poppies, yep. otherwise they would overgrow. Yes, right. Um, uh, and... Uh, the, there's TV coverage by two reporters mm-hmm. uh, named Bryant and Katie. Um, uh, Bryant is voiced by Michael McKeon, the, the famous Michael McKeon. Uh, you know, this is Spinal Tap and all oh. of those things. Um, and uh, Joyce Kurtz, who is <laughs> uh, famous for voicing Princess Leia in several Star Wars games. Um, and then also voicing uh, a computer in several Star Trek games, uh, which obviously make his, makes her a piece of shit for not choosing sides. Um, yeah, but also makes her an even bigger piece of shit for replacing uh, Madame Roddenberry herself, yeah, yeah, Nigel Barrett. Um, obviously, the names, Bryant and Katie, are references to Bryant Gumble and Katie Couric. Uh, Did who not are make that connection. To big uh you know news news reporters of the time um uh grandma is a character that we don't see in the first episode yeah but she is in most of the episodes i would assume so i think her character was pretty pivotal yeah and uh she's voiced by uh florence stanley who's most well known for her role on my two dads um which was a sitcom, uh, another sitcom of the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. I think late, early 90s, early to mid 90s. Um, and it's they're all wild to think around. that if you released a show called My Two Dads Now, people would be up in fucking arms. Yeah. But it aired in the 80s. And yeah. people were like, yeah, cool. Also, I doubt that show holds up. Oh, goodness, no. I, I, I am sure. I, mean, I don't even know it. Yeah, but, but like the, sure the type of kind. comedy, uh, a show like that in the 90s would have not been great. Yeah. Um, but you think about like it, gay people on TV a lot of the time. Yeah. Like I think of Eric Ch- Stone Street or whatever yeah. his name is from Modern Family. Yeah. And it's like his husband in that show is an actual real life gay man. Yeah. And I just can't picture myself. Like how embarrassing that would be being across from a gay man being a fucking caricature of yeah. a gay man. Just be like, yeah, I don't know. I yeah. think that's like, he's a straight man and he is acting yeah. as a gay man and he is acting like. Yeah. A caricature. A caricature. Yeah. It's not great. Um, uh, the bunch of Beatles don't show up. No. And they're like, maybe uh, they left the stove on. That's true. They do say that. Maybe they left the stove on, so they had to turn back and go check to make sure the stove wasn't on. And then they'll be, they're just running late. And so they wait. And the bunch of beetles still don't grow. grow. And the poppies grow. And they grow. And 
and the vines are growing over stuff and Mm -hmm. into the house and the, the, they're trimming stuff back and trying to manage, uh, this, these overgrown poppies and, uh, wondering what, when the bunch beetles are going to come. And finally one shows up. Yeah. His name's Stan. He's funny. Mm-hmm. He is very into um, Charlene. Yeah, he's definitely trying to fuck Charlene the whole time, <laughs> yeah. which is bizarre. Because she's a young teenage girl. Um, yeah. And, um, Voiced by Sally Struthers. Yep. Played by the, an um, old white teenage. woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and he's like, uh, you know, I got to... I got to get to the swamp because I got to go get laid Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to be dead. Because I'm only alive for two weeks. For two weeks. Like I got to go and bang, bang it out in the swamp to make some babies and the babies are what eat all the poppies. Yeah. So we got to get to the swamp. And he's horny as hell. That's why, that's the point they're making with Charlene. Right. Is that he's horny as hell. Yeah, he is. It's, I didn't realize what purpose that served until this very yeah. moment, but now I'm going like, oh, of course, he's he's in heat. Yeah, it's it's Ponfar. Um, mm. He's the Vulcan. Yeah, mating lust. mating season. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and so Charlene says, "I'll take you to the swamp. I'll show you how to get there." And so he away they go off to the swamp, and. Um, there is uh, a, the, like a big wall of poppies and bushes and stuff, and they mm-hmm. work their way through, and where the swamp should be, there is no swamp. No, there is a factory. Yeah, and the factory is Produces. for making wax fruit. Yeah. Um, and then um, the... Uh, then like one of the factory guys comes out and he's got like one of those old fashioned like <laughs> bug like pesticide, pesticide sprayers, yeah. sprayers and he's like oh there's one of those beetles now and he walks up to him and he's just like, he's like I thought we killed them all yeah and he's like you know what I mean like if you were gonna think about how big like you would think a beetle right like a little yeah. beetle but the stand's pretty big like, he's he, huge like sits on the windowsill like a he's like a you know basketball sized guy almost the size of a grown man's hand (laughs) (laughs) and he sprayed him with this stuff and he's like i thought we killed them all yeah and uh they're like why would you kill them he's like well the factory's very important we can't have them getting sucked up into all the the mechanisms and stuff like you gotta get rid of them for progress i mean the world needs charlene does the Charlene does the first thing that you should do to bring about social change. Mm-hmm. She contacts the media. Yeah. Yep. That's what they taught us in high school. They were like, you know what? One of the big tenets of friggin' enacting social change, get the media involved. Yes. So she gets the media involved and she's doing an interview mm-hmm. about how wiping out, like this is Stan and he's the last of the bunch beetles. And because you've wi- wiped out the bunch beetles, in uh, the name of corporate greed. Um, We're going to get overgrown here. Yeah. The poppies, there's nothing to eat the poppies anymore. We're screwed. And Earl uh, is seeing his daughter on television and realizes she's actually doing the interview from his kitchen. Yeah. Runs she's, in there to say, She's no, no, no. in the house. No. Yeah. Progress is it's good. The company that he, it's the company that he works for. Right that produces this fucking it's a huge he works for a giant mega corporation yeah right and uh he's like what would we do without microwave toast like i like i like at one point he's like waxed fruit is what separates us from the animals (laughs) (laughs) great so somehow um earl is the one who gets to make the decision on how to deal with the poppies. Yeah. It shows his boss and he's on the phone with like the higher ups and he's like, we need some kind of fucking numbskull. That's like gung ho for this company. That'll just say whatever. Cause this is a PR crisis. Right. 
Um, so he becomes the head of this. He sees Earl on TV yeah, guess, as he's saying this. Just the guy. Just the guy. And then Earl becomes the head of a committee. I find the show, like, it must do this a lot from going from the first episode to the last episode. With very little context, it'll just, like, cut. Yep. And a lot of shit's happened. Yep. And we're here now. Yeah. And it does that. Like, he's like, I've got just the guy. And then it cuts. And Earl is standing at a microphone. Right. Yes. In front of a crowd of people assuring them that, like, this, this corporation is good. Yeah. And everything's going to be okay. And they decide to defoliate the poppies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From helicopters. So they're going to spray poison yep. every which where. And they're like, wait, isn't defoliant just another word for poison? Yeah. And he was like, no, I mean, not really. I mean, it's just so harsh. You can't go outside. <laughs> yeah. You definitely can't be out there while they're doing it. Um, <laughs> and then the helicopters come. And they're spraying this stuff all over everything. Yeah. Right? The windows are getting coated in this stuff. They cover the earth. Yeah. All of Pangea Town or whatever the fuck it is. And the baby who is seeing this stuff cover the earth or cover the, like, is looking out the windows and is just, like, coating the windows just goes, pudding! Um, which I thought was just amazing. Um, uh, and so they all go to bed. And they wake up the next day to find that the defoliant not only killed the poppies, but killed every- All vegetation. All vegetation on earth. Yeah. It's just now just a barren wasteland. <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's not great. That's not great. And Earl's like running to Mr. Ridgefield like, uh, we kind of messed this up. Like- Yeah. We got to do I think something. We've gone too far. <laughs> and he's like, I know what we'll do. <laughs> how, oh, how do, yeah. We need, how do we, how do plants grow? They need water. How do we get water? Clouds. How do we make clouds? Volcanoes. Volcanoes. <laughs> we'll fucking make all the volcanoes erupt. That'll make a lot of clouds, which will make rain, which will then grow plants again. And they do that quick. Yeah. They drop a bunch of bombs into volcanoes. <laughs> yeah. And make all the volcanoes go off and essentially create nuclear winter. Yeah. Right. And it's funny, like, he's like, you know, it, it's getting very cold yeah. and it's starting to snow. And he's like, ah, you know what? That's great. Because you know what? Tomorrow the sun will come out and it'll melt all this snow. The snow will become water yep. and we'll grow all the plants back. And then he gets kind of cut off by the news where they're like... We are not expected to see the sun again for 10,000 years. 10,000 years. <laughs> he was like, uh. And then it gets dark. Yeah. Very. So I, I just had a note that said, this episode should be required viewing in every school yeah. everywhere. Every kid should have to see this episode of television. Mm -hmm. Um. This episode aired in 1994. Uh, and we forgot. We forgot, man. We bowed down to the corporate overlords after this. 30 years ago on network television, a sitcom was saying capitalism, corporate greed uh, is going to lead to our demise. Yeah. Catastrophically. And... In the 30 years since that show aired, we've done almost nothing. And we've done lots, just in the wrong, wrong direction. direction. <laughs> so, um, so now they're, they're, they're sitting there and... It, it's sunk in for almost everyone right. that they're all going to die. Right. Because there's no food. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no way to get food. There's no sun. It's cold. The snow outside is already starting Piling to pile up. high. They're in their house already shivering around each other. And and the baby has some questions. Yeah. And the baby basically like says. <laughs> the saddest part. What's going to happen? Yeah. And he's like, well, it looks like. Uh, the planet's going to die. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be there for your 
you and your brother and your sister because we made some mistakes. Yeah. And, and the baby's like, well, is there another planet that we can go to? And he's like, sorry, bud. This is the there's only one only we got. One. Yeah. There's, it's the only one we've got. Yeah. He's like, so what's going to happen to us is his next yeah. question. And he doesn't know. He doesn't, he doesn't really say like, we're going to fucking die. Right. He, he says, I don't, I don't really know. Yeah. And, and then it pulls, <laughs> the camera pulls away to see the snow just piling up in the darkness. Yeah. He does say shortly after that, like to, if, if at all to just like further show his naivety yeah. is like, he's just like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Mm. Something will happen. We'll figure something out. Yeah. And then it starts pulling out as the snow continues yeah. to pile and you are left to assume. Yeah. They're all. They die. Yeah. And it's funny that it's like, um, you know, the idea that the like ice age is what killed the dinosaurs, but they gave like a, reason why the ice age happened beyond like what fucking modern science right. explains uh they're just like oh no the dinosaurs caused they it caused it themselves. corporate greed and fucking ignorance <laughs> which is it, it is a very funny concept yeah um but in execution it's not funny it's sad many people call it the darkest uh sitcom series finale of all time um it's got to be up there yeah um, it like it it is so dark and the episode just takes a fucking hard left turn yeah, yeah. when it's oh, like for sure it, it feels like any other episode i watched a handful of episodes yeah. as previously stated it feels like any other episode right up until that moment where you go oh they fucked it yeah they're all gonna die yeah it's like it's jovial and like light yeah. until like maybe the last three minutes yeah of the episode yeah and then it's like oh fuck yeah. <laughs> and apparently when they pitched it the producers pitched it to the network mm -hmm. the network was like absolutely not and they went it's just history like it's they yeah. all the dinosaurs died yeah like, in like a what do you want us to do just have them live on forever thing. like it yeah you told us we can't make the show anymore this is how dinosaurs ended in mm -hmm. real like it may not be the exact way but like they were all wiped out yeah, by a catastrophic for thing yeah like um and so the the network relented and let them do it i'm glad me too because it's 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 fucking awesome i mean like it's dark and it's hard yeah but it's like that's a perfect ending but they should i mean honestly people should watch that episode like yeah, for provided that they haven't listened to this podcast where we well, <laughs> no, but I just I mean, everything in that general, happened. like the populace, like, like watching, uh, who Al Gore's documentary, like just watch the mm. dinosaurs episode and realize that like, we've been fucking up the planet irreparably for a long time. And we knew it 30 years ago. Yeah, but the people who need it most won't take it right, you know, yeah. like, be like, this is just a Ted Cruz. show, it, it's very silly, it's yeah. not anything close to what's actually happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in some ways it isn't. I, uh, I have a game for us, trivia, a little trivia game. I can't wait. Okay, so. <clears throat> I love these games and I hate that the guests get to play and I have to just fucking be a fly on the wall I love <laughs> when I get to play them. Um, the characters on the show are named after actual oil corporations, which I thought was yes. brilliant. Very clever. Yeah. Right. Earl's Earl is Earl Sinclair, uh, named mm -hmm. after Sinclair oil company, his boss, uh, Mr. Richfield, the Richfield oil company. Um, so anyway, I, uh, put together this little quiz about Sinclair oil. Now lo the logo for Sinclair Oil mm -hmm. uh, is uh, it's, it's like a green surround. It says Sinclair in script, and then it's got a green dinosaur. Right, which is why they did that, right? right. Um, <clears throat> why did they choose the dinosaur for their logo? Was it because the common belief at the time 
was that oil was just dead dinosaur bodies. And it is. Uh, the f- is, was it because the founder, Harry Sinclair, wanted the company to be perceived as old and established when it was brand new? Uh, three, it's not actually a dinosaur at all. It's a drawing of Henry Sinclair's, uh, Harry Sinclair's mustache, uh, just at a weird angle. Uh, I'm looking f- at it. It could be. Or C- or D, Sinclair actually had no idea where oil came from. He just really liked dinosaurs. B, final answer. You thought he wanted to make the company be perceived as older than it was? Yes. No, it's because they all thought it was dinosaur bones. Shit. Um, I think it's dinosaur bones. Question two. Sinclair Oil is famous for its participation in the Teapot Dome scandal. Ooh, which, uh, prior to Watergate, if you didn't know, the Teapot Dome scandal was considered the greatest scandal in American political history. And an oil company was involved, you say? So what was the Teapot Dome scandal? Was it President Warren Harding was a secret collector of teapots and was outed by Sinclair because he didn't award them a contract? Was it because oil companies bribed the Secretary of the Interior for drilling rights without competitive bidding? That one. Was it because Harry Sinclair had an affair with Warren Harding's wife while on vacation with the Hardings in Yosemite, California? Or was it an oil drilling operation in Teapot Dome, Wyoming, had a catastrophic oil spill damaging land and watersheds in a vast swath of the state? It's either B or D. Is there a place called Teapot, Wyoming? D. Final answer. D? Yeah. It's B. Fuck! Now, there is a place called Teapot Dome, Wyoming, and that's where the drilling rights were, where they got to drill for the oil, uh, but they didn't do any competitive bidding. They just bribed the, the, the Secretary of the Interior for those rights. Beautiful. For his role in the Teapot Dome scandal, Harry Sinclair spent how much time in prison? Zero. Well, that's not one of the options. So he spent some time in prison. One year, two days, six months, 20 years. Now, mind you, this was the largest political scandal in the U.S. history up to that point. C, six months. Final answer. Correct. Six months. Yeah. Uh, I was, it was between that and two days. I knew it yeah. <laughs> couldn't be long. Uh, and finally, while the Teapot Dome trials were happening. Oh, and by the way, uh, he wasn't con- convicted of bribery. Of course not. Uh, he was convicted of jury tampering. Um, and uh, the Secretary of the Interior was convicted of taking bribes, but none of the people who bribed him were convicted of giving him bribes. So no one, they were all acquitted. They were all acquitted of giving him bribes, but he was convicted of taking bribes from apparently nobody. When the tree is rotten, so is all the fruit. This is, this is my favorite one. <clears throat> While the Teapot Dome trials were happening, Sinclair was busy making another shady deal, which was what? He blackmailed the owner of the St. Louis Cardinals into selling him the team. He paid bribes to Benito Mussolini to get the exclusive drilling rights in Italy. He merged with the uh, Richfield Oil Corporation to form Arco. Or was caught doping his horses at the Kentucky Derby. He was caught doping his horses? No. No. No, he was um, bribing... Benito Mussolini and other leading fascists in Italy uh, for exclusive drilling rights. The tree is rotten. Yeah, there you go. And all of the fruit. So. That's the game? That's the game. I'm sadder. (laughs) Sadder than I was when it started. That's not usually how I feel with the conclusion of your games. The world is a terrible place, and I am very much afraid to die in it. <laughs> um, do you want to do gifts? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. 
I mean, send so it over. my throat was hurting. Yeah. So I haven't been able to sing. Yeah. So I haven't made you a song. Well, that's fine. It's I didn't make you a song either. I usually do. Oh, by the way, Caitlin believes that you are angry with her. I am. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Good, good, good. Um, so I drew something and it's a little different this week. I also drew something. It's it's I stepped out of my so, of my style and made something stranger. <laughs> I have sent it to you now. I'm looking at it. It's really good. I'm very scared of it. You actually are going to be. It's just a I just have a sense. Yeah. It's just a penis. No. It's a it's a life size <laughs> drawing accurate and to scale of, of your own of penis. My penis. <laughs> I think you're going to like it. Why can't I? Now I did this? do a little tracing. <laughs> you did a little tracing? Yeah. Of my penis? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> you were very sick last week. You I hardly was. noticed. Oh my god. It's old witchy. Witch witch z. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Wait a minute. I'm a I'm a witch nun ghost? Nuns are witches, aren't they? Nuns are? I don't know. I don't know the difference but between a witch and But I like it like I like the you don't know the difference between a nun and a witch. That's I think probably they're the same. Right. Yeah. Old witch C. Old witch Z. <laughs> I really <laughs> like it. I know. It's what cool did you one. trace? Uh, some of the nuns. Oh, the ha- habit the, and stuff. Basically the nun. I, I traced almost all of it. I just drew a mustache and glasses on it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. I know. It's quite nice. Um, well, I hope you like, I'm trying to get this so I can plop, pop it in our, uh, the thing here for you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I gotta grab the file. I'm still laughing at old witchy. Right. I I really like that it's old witchy. <laughs> and I tried to do a death metal font, but I got really lazy as it looked shittier and shittier. Yeah. All right, here we go. No, do this. There you go. Oh, here we go. Hey, weird. You put Hootie in death metal makeup. That's as well. not Hootie. Oh, it's me? That's not you. Oh, that's Cage? That's Cage. <sighs> Looks like the drummer of Kiss. Yeah, it does. <laughs> hey, Fritzy, it's Cage here. I can't believe this you cried your mom. Why don't you go drink? Oh, yeah. God, where do you think my son got all his hate from? I think that's the best hook I've ever written. Is it? Maybe. Cage just really brought it to life. She really did. Her performance is very cool. I, I I thought it was great. I thought it was amazing. I like that she, she apologizes really, at the end, too. She wanted to put an apology yeah. in it because she was like, I feel bad for saying this stuff. I so maybe. So I drew I drew her. She's the conductor. And um, yeah. yeah. The original lyric there was, I want to see your body explode. What, the last line? Yeah. (laughs) Because I obviously wrote the lyrics. Um, There was a couple things that she was like, I'm not comfortable saying Oh, no. And so she had to change. We we changed it, including, (laughs) I want to see your body explode, (laughs) whatever it is. (laughs) I feel like... uh, I, I can't even... I'm trying to like get inside your head to think about yeah. like what other lyrics could have been different in this. And I, that Cage would have been uncomfortable with. Yeah. There was one when she was like, I bet your mom is ashamed of her son. Yeah. Or it's like, <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> like the implication was that your mom raised a little fucking wimp. Oh yeah. And that she wasn't going to do that. Yeah. Right. And that, that was, I forget what the actual lyric was, but that was the concept. And she was like, I do not like, like the idea of calling anyone like a wimp or whatever. And she was like, and I do not like the idea of 
going after Susan in any way. <laughs> I wish you would have. That would have made me laugh really hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you can tell her when you go upstairs that uh, we are at war. That's what I was hoping for. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this, is, this was a nice thing mm-hmm. that I just did. Um, but but there's something coming. More, yes. Hmm. More is coming. I'm excited. I, I, I could only do so much song. while I was in Maine. Uh, yeah. I had limited resources available to me. So. Yeah, there's nothing in Maine. No, there literally is nothing in Maine. It was just trees and a lot of signs saying, don't hit a moose. Yeah, trees aren't resources. No, that's why dinosaurs just pushed them over. Mm-hmm. Just push them right fucking over. Um, I think that's it for this episode. I agree. Yeah. So um, you can eat shit, which maybe will coat your throat, feel a little bit better. I'm sure that would cause a massive infection. Yeah. Well, I mean, how much more massive it can be than the infection that's already there? I don't think it's infected. It's probably. It's just got, is it infected? It's probably infected. It's No. Does this look infected? I don't want to see. I saw it once. I never want to see it again. It hurts so much more after this episode. I'm sure it does. I'm sure you're not going to be able to speak for days. I was hoping to have some beers this weekend. Just just coat your fingers in vapor rub and stuff them down your throat. <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> so yeah, and then go uh, fuck everybody <laughs> go eat fucking shit themselves. Yeah.